Good morning, everybody. And thank you for providing this opportunity. I would like to thank Avneet and the team. They've done an excellent job in uh, bringing out uh, professionals uh, who are working in uh, steel industry or working on steel projects to uh, work on it. Now, uh, although my topic says Indian context, but it would be more of my Indian context because what I have done in India is what my uh, experiences with uh, working on steel. Uh, although we, have, uh, we are a, a large format organization, we have done more than 500 projects, planning, architecture, uh, uh, maybe a couple of infrastructure. But to be candid with you, we are just two projects old in steel. So I'll just start with that. So this is about us. We are uh, a company which is working on, uh, as Carol said, about institutional projects, which are campuses, NITs, uh, technical institutes, uh, medical college and hospital campuses, uh, and various other kinds of, and also hospitals as a healthcare company where we are working on a lot of hospitals. So this is a whole gamut and public buildings where we are working on uh, uh, international convention centers and then office buildings and police headquarters and kind of that uh, in the uh, government domain. 95% of our client are government and we have done a project which we are going to show or work about the details of with the government. So this was one of the largest project in steel with the government uh, which we have done. And there were uh, experiences which I would share and would be also uh, be of help to anybody who's working. So this is what we are. We are working in architecture and master planning, engineering, healthcare, and disaster management. We have office in, uh, of course, Delhi, we have a head office, and then we have branch office in Dubai, associate office in Australia, and various in the cities of India, we have various offices. Uh, we have a staff around 120 people. We are also working on PMC projects. So the whole gamut is, is there for us. So as I told you, we are just two project old. International Convention Center Patna, which is in India, and Dubai Outlet Mall Phase 2, which was a 1.5 million square feet of uh, retail development in Dubai. Dubai is working on steel buildings, a lot of them. Even residential, even uh, housing, mass housing, villas. They're doing whatever Avneet showed here, what we are working on, they've already been worked on. And Dubai has uh, created a... Uh, environment where steel buildings can work and thrive. They are quick, they are fast, and they are precise. So what we miss here is what they have already done. So we are heading towards them, or we are heading towards the working what they have already, or the environment they have already created. So this is the project. Uh, this is an international convention center. Brief about the project is that this is one of the largest auditorium in India. Uh, at, at this point of time, of course, they're going to come uh, larger than this, but this is a 5,000 capacity seated tiered auditorium, which we have made. And not only this, there were three components to it. One was a 5,000 uh, seated auditorium. The other was a uh, columnless hall of 40 meters, uh, where there was no columns in, uh, on the ground floor. And above that, they wanted a 800 seating or seated auditorium as well. So then we added, all that worked out in a small site of around uh, 10 acres. It, actually, it was 12 acres, but two acres were uh, cut off to a other uh, side of the road, so we couldn't use much of it. It's just used for a food court. Uh, this 10-acre site had to have all these components. The government was very clear. Uh, the chief minister, Mr. Nitish Kumar, had a meeting with us, and he explained that I want this to be a 5,000. We tried to reason it out that 5,000 is a bit bigger in size, difficult to manage, difficult to use as well. So, but then he was very clear that even I, I would like to have my political rallies being uh, done here in the auditorium. So that's how this 5,000 came into picture. And he had this love for the Vigyan Bhavan in, in Delhi. So he said, I want something like a Vigyan Bhavan and I will name it as a Gyan Bhavan. So we have a Gyan Bhavan, which is a 800 seated uh, auditorium in the other building. So this is the site. Uh, it is right in the heart of Patna uh, at uh, Gandhi Madan, if uh, anybody is aware of Patna and the surroundings. 
This is just in between the Ganga River and the Gandhi Maidan. So we have uh, a Gandhi Sangrale and just uh, adjacent to it is, the, is our site located, which is a 12 acre and a small chunk of it, which is a two acre site, which is detached through a road. Now we are interconnecting that site as well from an underpass. This was the Ganga River, this is the Gandhi Maidan where most of the political rallies happen today. Uh, these are the surrounding areas, Gandhi Srangale, Magad Mahila College and other things and this is the site which we had. So it has a close proximity to the location and we had a, a Ganga face as well, although Ganga recedes uh, quite a few meters from here, but still we had a Ganga face here. And these are the components which I spoke about, uh, convention center which was a 5000, which is a 5000 capacity, a plenary hall of 800 and a double height multi-purpose hall where they may want to hold exhibitions. So, and a modular meeting rooms and ancillary which, which is for a convention center like this. Uh, along with that they wanted to have a Sabhyata Dwar which is a civilization gate. Uh, they had an idea that uh, Patliputra has a very strong history, a strong history and a strong culture attached to it. So they wanted to depict through a, a commemoration gate or something like a, a gateway of India, India gate in terms of a Sabhyata Dwar. So these are the components of it. We had made a Sabhyata Dwar, the Gyan Bhavan, convention center and a food court. This is the section of it. That's how it looks that we have a a columnless hall on the ground floor, parking in the basement and a 800 seated capacity auditorium, <coughs> sorry, on top. This is how it's going to look when it's completed, it's almost, the structure is almost complete. We had derived that from the uh, Buddha Mudra of peace and we have inverted that to make this and there are rings which form like a fingers uh, interlocked together. Oops. And this is a Sabhyata Dwar and a Sabhyata Walk. There was a long chunk of around uh, half a kilometer available along the Ganga River, so we had developed into a waterfront development as Sabhyata Walk. Although the water is too much in this, but that's not the situation with Ganga there. And this is the building, uh, how it looks almost complete now, the sheeting or the, the enclosing part is going on. This is the 5000 uh, auditorium uh, or the main convention center. This is the atrium of the entry hall of Gyan Bhavan. So on ground floor we have the entry to the multipurpose hall. It is not about the project, what I showed you. The project was just the background. I'd like to share the experiences which we had working on the project. Uh, for us, it was not the first project because we had been working on Dubai Outlet uh, Mall for quite some time and we had uh, steel uh, experience prior to that. But that was for a private client in Dubai. So it was easier in terms of approvals, easier in terms of getting the things done. Here. What I missed was that during my education, although I'm almost now 19 years of experience I have, uh, during my education or even my niece is getting education uh, in architecture now, we don't have design problems in steel. We don't teach uh, steel as a medium in uh, uh, schools or colleges. What we do is probably we give an industrial building Maximum. So if any educationist sitting here in the group, I would like to uh, suggest that if it's great to give them a problem in steel, maybe a housing problem worked out in steel. So probably what you have started, Avneet, I was just going, uh, what uh, it, it was, what it's called? Uh, knowledge, uh, steel steel, knowledge. Knowledge? Knowledge, steel, steel unplugged. Yeah, steel unplugged. So that is something which the college students can relate to if they come to know that so much can be done. Although awareness has improved in last 20 years, of course, my time was again uh, 20 years ago, but again I feel that design problem in steel is something which is to be given to school students or architectural school students to get it done. Then awareness in alternative materials is what I think should be there. Not only steel, but 
uh, experimenting with various materials may be pre-stressed. Uh, all of it can be exp uh, and can be made aware to them. Case studies, we have very less case studies in India for such steel buildings. More so we have pre-engineered buildings, we have the, like you showed most of them were views, they were 3D views, so they are not on ground today. So what we would require is actual case studies, maybe offshore project study. So where we can understand how they worked out, how they made it. The second is the designing part. Convincing the clients to design in steel is itself a task. Generally, uh, and especially in the government sector, private might have a way in between the time and the cost, and he would say, okay, fine, let's go with steel if it's that saves me time. But for a government client, it is very difficult to convince anybody to go into steel because they have notions, they have myths. And we have broken few of them, uh, which I'll discuss later. Design research and case studies is, of course, a matter which probably uh, is everybody should have it. Then during design, this was what we faced that there is an architecture and structure integration. We wanted something, the structural designer wanted to give us something. I know there are a lot of structure designers sitting in here. Uh, the value engineering part or the aesthetic parts of steel design is something which uh, I think all the structural people, all the uh, uh, people sitting here who are designing the, actual designing the, the stresses and the, uh, the beam and the columns of it, need to really think it aloud that what the building should look beautiful, of course it has to perform, but it has to look beautiful itself. So that part of value engineering, which we struggle a lot, we had to redo, redo, and then work out that, okay, we want it beautiful, we want it circular, we want it this, and everything was, was going to and fro for quite some time. So that is something which we, and of course, so the service co co coordination was uh, a problem of steel because in uh, concrete you have flexibility to an extent. Of course, steel has its own merits, but still. And visualization, when you visualize, when you make 3Ds, when you make uh, working models, it becomes difficult to make steel models, it becomes difficult to visualize steel, make 3D, ask your 3D team to really work on with a different notion of steel. So this is something which we struggled with. Documentation was one part where we, we really struggled a lot in terms of, and that's the case with, with I, I think, most of the architects working here, that you don't have plinth area rates for steel buildings. I mean, no, not that I know. What is there present are less than what is concrete. So it doesn't work like that. It's a different uh, building structure or a different building way in which we, you do, and there are no PAR, and in a, in a government, uh, set up, you require a PPR, a DPR, there are uh, say stages of, of working in a project where you have to work a preliminary project report which is on a plinth area rate based off CPWD. How do you convince them that this is not going to be the normal structural, uh, normal concrete PAR which is going to work for you? It has to be a steel building and it, is, it would be higher than the concrete structure of PAR which is available. It is not there. Then estimation and tendering, we have very few people who are actually working on steel tendering and steel BOQs. So there was a, a, a whole to and fro going on, then identifying the right person, understanding the quantity, putting it together, then rechecking it. So estimation and costing or the tendering part was uh, difficult. Then making shop drawings, I mean, not we making it, but getting shop drawings made from the contractor. Uh, uh, Aluwalia contractors were, are the contractors of this. And then convincing the client that the work would be done not through our working drawings, but through the shop drawings submitted by them. Because they are of a mindset where we make the working drawings and that is worked as the uh, actual uh, good for construction drawings. So here the shop drawings are the actual good for construction drawing rather than our drawings are. So, we have to have again doc documentation to and fro for that. We have to tell them that, okay, we'll stamp it, we'll sign it, we'll make that as GFC. The GFC would be from us, but the shop drawings would be made by them. Then execution documents, of course, a lot of changes happening in the government setup. It, ha it happens that a lot of modifications happen when 
during the course of construction and that becomes uh, the important part in this was what we faced now it the project is almost on the completion stage. So, initially the client expectations during the initial phase are a lot different because he has a mindset of working on a concrete project where the foundations come up, column go out, lot of materials are being dumped there. So, they have an idea that the building is going to come up whereas, in steel it generally happens that lot of uh, uh, workshop activity happens very less activity happens on site. So, they get, get a bit jittery in terms of what is happening with our project, it is not really coming up. So, this is something which we face. Then skilled supervision is of course, I think most of the people would be facing this that skill supervision for steel is different than what in concrete. We have lot of people who work on concrete and have great experiences, but for steel because we have not done so much of work, we do not have skilled supervision. Then modifications as I spoke uh, during execution, if a higher authority comes in or a client comes in and they expect a certain modifications, it becomes very difficult in terms of steel, wherein in concrete you have a flexibility of shifting walls here and there. And of course, problem resolution during construction. Now, these are the myths which we broke during the project or in the lifeline of the project where the client had an idea of or not in the client, most of the people we came across with that steel buildings look temporary the convention center would look industrial. We had to actually bring them the photographs, actually bring them the case studies, present them the case studies, this is how it is done and you are asking for so much of columnless space and with a auditorium on top. So, there is not much an option or we need to have columns down. So, we had to actually work it out with the people to, to understand that this is not going to be look industrial. They had that what about corrosion and exposure, they saying that it would have a corrosion effect, uh, the steel is, is bare uh, open. Then it, they had an idea that it is expensive and time taken. This something which I feel we still the steel industry needs to work out because neither the time neither the cost both the things are not reducing as for me as for my experience it is still the same or maybe more than what the concrete is. Steel is not disaster resistant, they had an idea that steel is not a disaster resistant, we have to prove them, we have to uh, sit with them, got the drawings vetted from IITs, NITs and then present it. And they had an idea that only stadiums are made in steel because that is a public gathering area, why convention center. The way ahead as we think or as I think about it is that structural aesthetics or the value engineering is the in most important part of it. The structural engineers need to really work with architects in terms of designing beautiful buildings, beautiful beams, beautiful columns, so that they look really elegant to the team. Documentation, which we said that needs to be worked out, even CPWD needs to come up with uh, a steel manual or a steel PAR. Uh, costing and estimating skill, skill development skid labor and cost and time optimization is something which I already talked about. So, this is what I have to tell about my experiences of it. Thank you.